The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom revolves around a brand new set of mechanics that lets you solve problems in creative ways. And one of these new core mechanics is called Fuse. We are going to go over the basics of fusion and even give a few examples of the kinds of crazy things you can do with this new power. You first gain the ability to fuse from the Inisa Shrine on the Great Sky Island, the first landmass you explore in Tears of the Kingdom. The description reads, Attach something to an equipped weapon or shield to enhance it. You can undo this fusion, but that will destroy whatever has been attached. There are three key points we'll go over here. What exactly can be fused together, what you lose by breaking these fused things apart, and what does enhance it actually mean. Mm. We start with your base foundation of every fusion, a weapon or a shield. While you can combine different materials while cooking, and stick things in the world together with Ultra Hand, the specific fuse ability only works on weapons including arrows and shields. To begin the fuse process, equip any weapon or shield you want to fuse. You use the ability by simply selecting it on the radial wheel while holding L, or tapping L after the ability is already selected. When the ability is activated, you can highlight a particular material, item, or weapon in the environment by pointing your camera at it, and then pressing the corresponding button to fuse that item or weapon to the base weapon or shield of your choice. The first fusion you have to make is putting a boulder on a claymore so you can smash through a stone wall. Simple, right? Don't worry, we are just getting started. While you have your bow drawn with ZR, press and hold up on the D-pad before selecting the material you want to attach to your arrows with the right stick. For instance, you can attach fire fruit to your arrow tips to make fire arrows. Then let go of the D-pad, and the new arrow will be knocked and ready to fire when you let go of the trigger. So to recap, to fuse something to a weapon or a shield, the item or material must be in the environment. To fuse to an arrow, the item or material must be in your inventory. To get something in your inventory back out into the environment, simply use the hold command from the inventory and then drop it. To round this section out, a special mention should be made for Zonai devices, which are different contraptions you'll find throughout Hyrule. Some of these devices, like fans, rockets, and flame emitters, can be fused to weapons and or shields for special effects. Our reviewer, Tom, because he thrives on chaos, attached a flame emitter to a boomerang, making a giant throwable tornado of fire that probably caused more damage to Link than anyone else. But if flame emitting boomerangs are a bad use case for fusion, then I, I don't even want to play this game anymore. Unfortunately, you can only fuse two things together. And if you try to fuse something onto an already fused weapon that you may have scored from an enemy or a chest, you'll receive an in-game message telling you to stop being a disappointment. While the in-game tutorial for fusion explains that breaking a fusion apart will destroy whatever is attached, that only goes for the material, not the base weapon or shield. So you can attach a rock to a sword to turn it into a hammer, but once you break that fusion apart, only the rock will be destroyed. However, once you progress further in the game, there is a method to detach both pieces without breaking either one. We don't want to spoil that method here, but if you want to know more, make sure to check out the fusion section of our massive Tears of the Kingdom strategy guide at IGN.com. The initial tutorial for fusion in the Inisa Shrine tells you that fusing materials with weapons or shields will enhance them. But what does that mean exactly? A few different things, it turns out. First, as we've shown already, new materials can give weapons, arrows, and shields new properties. A rock on a sword creates a hammer, a fire fruit on an arrow creates a fire arrow, and as they showed in the gameplay demonstration, a puff shroom on a shield will create a cloud of smoke. These effects range from simple to game-changing, but we'll go over some more specifics in a bit. But the other differences these materials make is in durability and attack power. Most base weapons in the game are pretty brittle. For instance, a long stick will break after only 18 attacks, but fuse it with a construct horn and it will last for 44. This is a great way to extend the life of your weapons if you're tired of them breaking or need them to do a lot more damage fast. Unfortunately, this won't reset the durability of your weapon, so it will still incur the same amount of durability loss from before it was fused. If you need to know how much damage materials will add to weapons, make sure you check out their fuse power in the description. And when you do fuse them, it will give you both the attack power added to the weapon and the new full attack power of the fused weapon in parentheses. Fuse power doesn't apply to shields, however. While durability will increase, defensive power will not. The trade-off is that equipping Zonai devices like fans and flame emitters will give you special properties when you hold ZL, 
like blowing enemies away from you or creating a makeshift defensive flamethrower. Weapons can also be fused to other weapons, but they're not as durable as fusing weapons to materials or items. For instance, if you need extra reach, fusing a stick to a halberd will let you poke enemies from a mile away, but it'll also break pretty fast. Also, often in the description, is a hint of how a material should be used for fusion. Pay close attention to inventory materials or item descriptions that may have the exact effect you need to fit a particular situation. Now that we've gone over the basics of fusion, we wanted to share a few extra tips, as well as some useful and interesting fusions we've made during our time with the game. The Coblin Horns are short, but make sure to equip them on long sticks or other spear-like weapons as they make great spear tips. Zonai Construct and Lazalfo's Horns are ideal materials for both one- or two-handed swords. Any rock makes a hammer, and flatter stones make axes, but Moblin Horns make much more durable rock-breaking bash weapons to destroy rubble. Arrows can get weighed down with big horns, so stick with monster teeth, or toenails, ugh, to increase damage. As shown in the gameplay demonstration, Keys Eyes will give your arrows homing properties, but Keys Wings let your arrows fly much farther, much faster. Elemental Fruit, Bomb Flowers, and Choo Choo Jelly will replace finding Fire or Ice arrows or even Bomb arrows in the world, so make sure to stockpile different elements. Use enemy traps to your advantage. One of the first gameplay clips we saw from Tears of the Kingdom was Link recalling a spiky iron ball to throw it back at his enemies. But you could also fuse that trap to a weapon. Your choice. If you intend on fighting a boss, make sure you have at least one weapon unfused. This way you can use a boss material on that weapon in case it drops something that cannot be collected. Gems add powerful elemental effects to arrows, and are especially effective on magic rods. And fuse a rocket to your shield and equip it for a one-time anywhere blast-off boost to high above. Fusion looks to be a core part of Tears of the Kingdom and we can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. What's your favorite fusion from your time with the game? Make sure to let us know in the comments below, and while you're here, check out the best Shrines to Complete first video. And for everything else Zelda, you're already in the right place. IGN.